Thank you for joining this webinar. Today's topic is Microsoft Gets Agile. Uh, this update has been anticipated for a while, uh, years in my case, and in this session, we'll look at the Wave 1 features. Just to introduce myself, my name's Baz Kinder, and I am a Microsoft PPM consultant at Wellington and a virtual team member within Microsoft. So today, I'll start with a brief introduction to Wellington before looking at the Wave 1 Agile features within Microsoft Project Online Desktop, before moving on to a live demo showcasing the new Agile capabilities, after which I'll highlight some of the items on my wish list for Wave 2. So first of all, uh, let me tell you a bit about Wellington. So Wellington have been helping clients to increase their project management maturity since 2001, and uh, we offer a wide variety of specialist project management services which span pure project management consulting, PMO consulting, as well as offering managed services. We're also a Microsoft Gold certified PPM partner. We offer a comprehensive set of services, as you can see on the screen right now. And they range from providing consulting on discovery and design right through to providing ongoing third line support services. Uh, last but not least, on the training side, we're an APM accredited training provider offering project management, PMO, and Microsoft PPM training. Uh, if you'd like to know more, then all you need to do is check out the Wellington website or get in touch. My contact details will be coming up towards the end. As you can see from the client list that's on the screen right now, we've worked with quite an eclectic mix of clients who span a variety of sectors to deploy Microsoft PPM. If you'd like to read their stories, then please keep an eye on our website as we have a number of case studies being released in the next few weeks. So please do keep an eye on uh, wellington.co.uk. So to access the latest Agile capabilities, you must have what is called the click to run variant of the Microsoft Project Desktop Client. So in other words, the Project Desktop Client through Office 365. Unfortunately, however, if you have Microsoft Project Professional 2016, which is based on the perpetual license model, whereby you've purchased the licenses outright in place of uh, subscribing, you won't unfortunately get the update. And if you've got an older version like Project Professional 2013, then uh, definitely forget about it. You will not be getting the update. And again, I'll be showing you during the live demo how you can actually go about accessing the update if you haven't already got it on your desktop client. So looking at the Wave 1 features that have been launched by Microsoft, what do they provide? Project Now supports Agile, enabling you to use Scrum or Kanban methodologies in your project planning, execution, and reporting. To help you keep track of your Agile projects, Microsoft Project Now also offers five brand new reports, which we will be taking a look at during the demo itself. And last but not least, there are also eight new views uh, which are available to support the planning and execution of the Agile projects that you have running within Microsoft Project. So we're now onto the live demonstration, which I'm sure you all want to see. So as part of this demonstration, um, I'm going to be getting hands-on, and I'll start off by showing you how you can access the update in the first instance, as I talked about at the very beginning. Uh, we'll have a look at the brand new Scrum and Kanban capabilities in action, and I'll highlight how you can also work in a hybrid model where you've got multifunctional teams working together on a single project. And of course, we'll uh, take a tour of some of the new reports that are also available as well. So on that note, what I'm going to do is just very quickly switch over to my demo environment. So right now, I've actually ended up on one of the Scrum screens, which I'll come back to a bit later, but in the first instance, what I want to do is just show you very quickly how you can access the update if you haven't yet got it. In order to get it, click on the File uh, tab at the top, then go to the Account link. And when you get there, the first thing to do is to ensure that you have actually got the Click to Run version of Project uh, Online, uh, Desktop Client Manager. If you've got Project Professional 2013, 2016, again, it will not work. Then what you need to do is click on this uh, tile to update options and press update now. And once you do that, it should tell you there's a brand new update available. And uh, if it is, go ahead and install it. Now, in my instance, it didn't work straight away. I kept on being told by Project Desktop Clients that I had the latest version installed. And the only way in which I could resolve this was actually to uninstall Office and Project 
and just to reinstall it. And once I did that, hey presto, I had the latest update. Going back to the main screen then, I've actually opened up a project. So this project is not saved locally. I've actually got this saved in Project Online, which I'm not talking about today, but that's the enterprise edition to Microsoft Project, the desktop client. It's worth checking out if you haven't done so already. So in any ways, I've opened up this project. And uh, right now, I'm actually looking at the planning board. So you can see that I uh, get the planning, and I've got the planning board open. And I can see there that I don't have a sprint. This is effectively my product backlog. And then I have got a series of sprints already set up. Again, see sprints, I can also see the uh, names of the tasks. I can see which resources are assigned. And if I was to double click, I would open up my task information window, as you would do historically uh, using Microsoft Project uh, Standard. Uh, click OK to get rid of that. Something else that you can also do now that wasn't previously possible is actually click and drag these cards around. So for a start, cards were not previously available, but they are now, and uh, they are very, very straightforward to use. And I know this because I've been playing with this quite extensively over the last couple of weeks. One of the things that you can do as well to set up your sprints is actually go in and adjust what the system generates out of a box. You can see there, there's a name column, and I've already gone in and started naming some of these sprints, uh, aligning them to various months. In terms of length, you've also got the ability to define the length of your sprints. Now, typically that's 30 days or a month. So you can either set this manually or simply by going in uh, to the start and finish date, you can define the uh, length of your sprints automatically. So let's put in a, a rather large one there of 122 days. But again, this gives you quite a bit of control in terms of doing that. And you've also got the ability to generate the sprints through to either the finish date or to a custom date. So I've already demonstrated how you can move the cards around to uh, align them to various sprints. Uh, what you can also do is actually uh, right click on any of these cards and you've got the ability to assign resources. Again, I'm currently connected to Project Online, so I've got in the background an enterprise resource pool set up. But if you're using this just locally, you can also assign your local resources. And you're not restricted to assigning a single resource. You can assign a number of resources if you want to. And again, I'll open up the information window, click on resources, and you see there that I've got the ability to assign as many resources as I want to. And I can also define uh, the amount of work that's actually required against each one of these tasks. But for now, it's cancelling out. If I want to enter any completion percentages or use to mark a task as being complete, again, right click and you press mark 100% complete. If I click on sprint, I can actually go to the sprint board that is currently in place. So if I click that, you can see the sprint that's uh, in the time frame that I'm currently in right now. And within this, you've actually got a series of buckets or columns already predefined. So next up, in progress and done. You've also got the ability to add new columns as well. In fact, why don't we go ahead and do that right now? Uh, so let's type in pending approval. Uh, you can also change the uh, positioning of this as well. So I'm going to move out to the left. And instead of this task being completed, I could actually say that, no, it's not yet completed. It's currently pending approval. And I could also take up a task through and say that they are now complete. Reporting, I'm going to show you a bit later because you have got the ability uh, to go in and view the status of any of these tasks at any time using some of the brand new out of the box reports. But before I do that, what I am going to do is actually switch over to another project. So the project that I've been uh, playing with right now was actually a scrum project. You've of course got the ability to have a simple Kanban methodology in place, or you can have a hybrid setup, which is what I'm about to demonstrate. So we used to illustrate how you can actually work in a hybrid approach using a combination of waterfall plus Kanban. I've uh, moved over to this other project. This is the Dynamic CRM deployment across EMEA. And one of the new additions that you have through the Agile capability is this brand new column called Agile, which is very easy to add simply by going to add in a new column. It's available right there in the list. And you can see that you can actually specify which tasks are to be managed in an Agile approach and which ones are not. So you might have a project manager wanting to manage the overall scheme of work using Waterfall, but you might have parts of a project that have been handed off to a Scrum Master to manage using a uh, more of an Agile approach. So scrolling down, I have already actually selected a work package and made it Agile, as you can see here. So when I then go over to my Kanban board, to the backlog, and look at the board itself, I can see that it actually contains a list of all of those tasks that have been uh, designated as Agile tasks. 
I then have the ability to actually click and drag and uh, schedule them in as appropriate. Uh, I've also got the ability, just as I did on the previous screen as well, to mark items that are complete or to go in and add other resources. Something else that I can also do is actually go into the backlog and add in new tasks. So um, let's call this a new task. Press add. I want to go back to the task window and back to the Gantt chart. You will see that new task has been added in. Okay, so that was a very quick look at how you can work using an agile approach. Let's now go and have a look at some of the brand new reports that are also now available to support you in your agile way of working. So going back to the existing project that I had, what we're going to do is go over to the report tab. And from there, if you click on the agile button, you will see that we've actually got a selection of five brand new reports. So agile task status, work status, current sprint task status or work status again and you also have sprint status so let's just step through each one of these incrementally so when it comes to agile task status we can see uh, one of the tasks broken down uh, according to their status so backlog tasks that have been done or those that are in progress next up and there's the brand new status we had which was pending approval you've also uh, got a chart there showing you remaining tasks and you can also see that in a slightly different format and a table format. Going back to the report menu, let's go and have a look at work status. Not too dissimilar to what we've already seen, but you've, uh, again, you've got remaining work. I don't really have a lot of data in the system, hence the reason that it's looking a bit bare. But you've also got remaining work over time, remaining work by resource, and remaining tasks being displayed on that same report. And in fact, one of the things that I do want to illustrate very quickly is the fact that you can click onto any one of these reports and bring up a field list. So if you want to extend the report and the tables, you can do that very easily. But that aside, let's just go back to what's available out of the box and have a look at the current sprint, the task status. So again, not uh, too dissimilar to what we saw. We can see the percentage of tasks that are currently in the backlog, uh, ones that have been completed, the ones that are in progress, and so forth. And aside from this, you've also got a few others. So let's go and have a look at uh, work status. So remaining work, remaining work over time, remaining work by resource, and again, remaining tasks. Last but not least, we've also got uh, more of an overall sprint status. So going into that, you can now see the different sprints laid out, the number of tasks per those sprints, and the amount of work per sprint as well. So yes, we've got uh, lots of features in Wave 1, but we want to see Microsoft Project get more agile. So here is the Wave 2 wish list. So one of the first things that I would say is that we at Wellington were very big advocates of Microsoft Project Online, the enterprise component that I talked about earlier that makes up Microsoft PPM. And we would love to see some of the agile features replicated or supported to some extent within Project Web App, the browser interface for Project Online. In particular, I think the board views would be a great addition to bring into Wave 2. In a similar vein to that, we would also like to see the new agile related fields and columns to be available as out-of-the-box OData feeds that would enable you to report at the portfolio level using Power BI or using Excel. Now, aside from these two elements, some of the other advances we would like to see include baseline support. So currently, the Agile components are not getting baselines. We would also like to see some task um, or sprint date interaction. So whilst it's currently possible to set sprint specific start and finish dates, as I demonstrated earlier, there's no interaction or correlation with this task level start or finish dates within a specific task. So as an example, if you were to place a task that's scheduled to start and end in March to a sprint that's defined for November, you don't get any alerts or notifications informing you that there is that disparity there. We'd also like to see some interaction between the planning and the sprint views. So for example, if you currently set a task to 100% complete in the planning board, I'd like to see that task move into the done column or bucket in the current sprint board. The other one that I think is quite an easy win is adding in resource presence indicators. So if I was quickly able to just to go back to my demo environment, one of the things that you can see in place is that uh, against the resource names and the resource column, We've got Skype presence information. However, when I go to the uh, board view, uh, you will see that actually, even though the resource name is displayed, 
There's no Skype presence information. However, this is rectified when you go into the backlog sheet where you actually see if it resources are available or not or busy as the case might be. But it would really be a great win to have or a nice addition to have, I would think, in the Wave 2 release. So that uh, is what I think. But what would you like? Please add your comments or email them through to us. We would love to see what additions you would like to see in Wave 2. Just before I do share my contact details, which are coming up, um, I would like to sign post to just a couple of things. First of all, I'd like you all to take part, if you can, in the State of Project Management Annual Survey 2018. It only takes 10 minutes to complete, and simply by taking part, you're automatically entered into a prize draw uh, where you could win either John Lewis vouchers for the value of £250 or a ticket to next year's future PMO conference, which is something that I'm going to talk about now. So Future PMO is a one-day PMO event. Next year's event, so that's Future PMO 2018, will be taking place on October the 4th in London. You can pre-register your interest now at futurepmo.com. And by doing that, you get notified about tickets going on sale and the early bird offers as well. So just to close off, I have now shared my uh, contact details on the screen. Please do feel free to reach out with any questions or to discuss how we can help you to deploy Agile methodology or to implement Microsoft Project Online across your department or your organization. But in closing, I'd like to thank you all very much for taking the time to view this session. I do hope you found it useful.